Hello everyone, welcome to Geology Concepts. Now this is the first video in the mineralogy series. So let's get started. Mineralogy is the study of minerals. Mineralogy can be understood as a subject of geology which includes the study of chemistry of a mineral, the crystal structures of a mineral and the physical and optical properties of a mineral. So these all sciences come together to understand the basic structures, the properties of the mineral. Before going into the details in the other videos, let's get started with some definitions. Now, a mineral. Now there are some basic characteristics of any mineral or you can say of every mineral. So first characteristic is that it is a naturally occurring product. Now what does that mean? It means that all minerals have to have form in nature. An inorganic solid compound that has a specific com chemical composition but it is synthesized in the lab is not a mineral. It must be naturally occurring. The other properties is yeah, yeah, this figure. You see, there are these all are minerals which are of different colors and every color are occurring in nature. Now that's the first property. The second property is that it should be inorganic in nature. And what is meant by that? That there should not be presence of any CH bond in it. So according to this definition, sugar that is sucrose is not a mineral even though it is naturally occurring in plants because it is organic in nature and has a presence of CH bond. Point worth mentioning here is that the substance should not contain a CH bond but it can be produced from a living organism like there are some species that secrete aragonite and calcite as their shells so they might be coming from a living species but does not contain a CH bond so they are a mineral and sucrose is not a mineral because it contains the CH bond. So I think it's pretty clear. Moving on to the next uh, properties, which is the specific chemical composition. Now this means that the chemistry of a mineral is well defined and is, at least to some extent, fixed. Each mineral can therefore be considered as a compound consisting of one or more elements that must occur in certain proportions to each other. These proportions are either fixed or allowed to vary within the limits guided by certain rules. So accordingly, there is a compound called limonite. Now this is a red yellow naturally occurring iron oxides and hydroxide is not a mineral. Why? Because the proportion of Fe to oxygen to hydrogen is not fixed or not controlled by any rule. So this is not uh, a mineral. So we'll talk about it later also in other videos. And the last property which is the internal structure of every mineral is fixed and they have a regular internal structure. So this means that every mineral has the ability to form crystals. And accordingly, according to this definition, we see that glass is not a mineral because it does not have a regular internal structure. As you all know, glass is a super cool liquid and it flows under the effect of gravity. Similarly, there is a compound called opal, which is quite similar to quartz and has a formula of SiO2.NH2O. It's not a mineral again because it is it is an amorphous form of silica and it lacks the specific chemical composition and hence it's a mineraloid. So you can see this opal in the list of minerals in various textbooks but uh, it is all they regarded as an amorphous mineral. Okay, So these are the basic properties of any mineral. Now we move on to identification of a mineral. Now minerals have a distinct chemical and physical and electrical and thermal and various other properties which can be used for their identification. Now because these physical properties of minerals are easiest to study, we will focus on that. Now before going into these uh, properties, let me show you a figure. Now this figure you see, the left hand side is a macroscopic property or a macroscopic uh, image of a hand specimen. And uh, the right hand side image is the microscopic property. As you can see, there is a significant difference between these two levels of uh, uh, visualization. So these macroscopic properties and these microscopic properties are studied as a uh, actually separately because there are they, there is there is significant difference between the properties of a mineral at a microscopic level and microscopic level. So we'll deal with it later. Coming back to the physical properties of the minerals. The first is color and streak. So now there the color can be used as an identification for some minerals which occur in a specific color. And quartz you can see is cannot be uh, the color cannot be an ident identification property of uh, quartz because quartz occur as many colors. Whereas the azurite there is a mineral called azurite. This is not the figure of azurite, but azurite is a blue color. 
and always occur as in blue color so it can be identification property of azurite and the next is streak now a streak it is the color of the mineral in powder form now hematite has a black color but a reddish brown streak so it can be identification property for uh, hematite next is luster now luster c is the appearance of the surface of the mineral in the reflected light now any mineral will either have a metallic or non-metallic luster now if the mineral reflects light very well the luster is considered to be metallic which you can see as galena pvs antimony etc non-metallic luster when some of the light rays pass through the mineral they have various other properties like edmontine this is the property of diamond which to, to reflect light then there is this vitreous property or the glassy property you can say then there is greasy pearly silky dull or earthy so there are various properties so hence luster then we have hardness now hardness we say is the measure of relative resistance of mineral to scratches on their surface now mohas scale of hardness which is the most commonly used scale is an empirical scale from 1 to 10 as you can see in the figure that arranges the mineral according to the relative hardness but now it's worth mentioning that it does not mean that uh, mineral with hardness 3 that is calcite is three times harder than mineral with hardness 1 that is talc no gypsum is not two times harder than talc in this uh, figure you see the minerals are arranged from uh, hardness 1 to 10 and uh, diamond being the hardest mineral present one thing we should be noted here is that a single mineral may have different hardness in different orientations this is due to the fact that hardness is a reflection of the strength of the different bonds in a mineral moving on fracture and tenacity now fracture is a property of a mineral when a mineral breaks okay so there can be various types of fracture this might need uh, another video on it so I'm just avoiding this here and I'll explain this in, in a separate video. The other property which is tenacity is the behavior of the mineral under stress and it may be brittle that is can break into pieces of powder the example is calcite it can be sectile when a mineral can be cut with a knife it can be malleable it can be beaten into sheets it can be flexible it can be elastic so this is the tenacity next is the sense sense is actually the taste and feel like as you can see in the figure the geologist is trying to taste the mineral and check whether it is halite or something else because halite has a common salty taste and feel when you say feel is the is the greasy feel or you can see the uh, slippery feel as you can see in graphite graphite is a mineral with a slippery feel so this is also a property now coming to cleavages now cleavage this is the property that some minerals exhibit of breaking along a definite smooth plane now the presence of these planes is a simple indication of the difference in the strength of bonds between atoms in crystals now thus the property of the cleavage is intimately connected with the atomic structure of the minerals now this is also a topic that needs quite elaboration so I will do a separate video on it okay and the other property is specific gravity now a specific gravity is the ratio of the weight for the mineral to the weight of the equal volume of water it is determined through there are Walker Steelyard balance for larger specimens then there is specific gravity bottle for small mineral grains then there is chemical balance method for small fragments of minerals so this is also property physical property then there is magnetic and electrical properties now a mineral capable of being attracted by a strong magnet is called magnetic for example magnetite and pyrite. then the electric properties there are three types of electrical properties to a mineral can have one is the pyroelectricity now which is most commonly seen in quartz the development of positive and negative charges of electricity on different parts of the same crystal when its temperature is suitably altered called pyroelectricity there is piezoelectricity property of development of electric charges on crystallized mineral by pressure or by tension is called piezoelectricity example quartz again then there is photoelectricity when some minerals are exposed to radiation they produce electricity for example fluoride so this is also one of the properties so 
quartz. Quartz is used as a crystal in watches. Radioactivity is also a property. Final property, if you can say, these, these are not all the properties. There are there is the property which I'm mentioning only the major ones here. The crystal system and optical properties is the optical property is the physical property at a microscopic level, and crystal system is at the crystal level. So in these uh, the topics like fracture, cleavage, crystal system, and optical properties needs a separate video. So I'll deal with them later. Now if we go to the chemical properties of minerals. Now chemical properties of mineral is the chemistry of that mineral whether it's an oxides, hydroxides, carbonate, halide, nitrate, silicates, native minerals that example gold and silver but the more important from the geologic point of view is the classification of various rock forming mineral groups like olivine. These are the mineral group that contains many minerals like pyroxene, amphiboles, feldspar, quartz, mica, garnets, carbonates, etc. Where, so I'll be covering all these in the separate video. So this was the video on the basic properties of a mineral and uh, please like the video, comment on the video and please don't forget to subscribe. I'll keep posting videos and bye for now.